Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with another category spotlight and today we are spotlighting intrigue! Oh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite lines. This, the romantic suspense line, are two of my favorites. If you know me, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know how much I love the romantic suspense, the suspenseful type of books. Um, I am a junkie for all things like Law & Order, CSI. <laughs> So this is completely within my wheelhouse. I mean, just, I had to stop myself, like sitting down to do this video. How I normally do these spotlight videos is that I'll kind of share with you a bit of a history of the line and share a couple of authors with you. But like, I'm just standing over at my bookshelves and just pulling books at random, like of authors that I want to recommend. And I had to stop because it was getting a little out of hand, my friends, a little out of hand. So I will list all of these authors below in the description box so you guys can go ahead and check them out. Um, Cause yeah, but I will be starting off with kind of showing you guys some of the older ones that I have here. I mean, not all of these are brand new, not that first big stack I held up are not all brand new. Some of them might go back maybe 10 or more years, but it's more of an author recommendation than anything else. But these, I kind of want to show you guys like the history of the line a little bit. Um, so before I get into the video itself, I do want to explain the difference between the romantic suspense line from Harlequin and what intrigue is, because there is a difference. And I get this question a lot. So what's the difference between this and this? So essentially this was explained to me and it makes sense. So with intrigue, the mystery aspect of the story is the driving plot. So you've got whatever the case, whatever the mystery is, these two people are on the run from a dangerous killer or whatever the case may be. And oh, while they're on the run, they happen to think that the other person's kind of cute and, you know, maybe a relationship might, but it's not like it takes away from the, the mystery aspect always is. And that's the main priority. It's like, when this is all said and done, I'd really like to take you out to dinner, kind of a scenario. There have been um, books where the relationship might be a second chance romance, which I read very recently with a book I'm going to talk about in this list or in this stack of books that I really, really liked. They dated in high school. Something happened. She's back. I'll explain it in a little bit. But the mystery of what was happening was first thing and the romance came secondary. Now, within the romantic suspense line, the romance comes first. So romantic suspense romance, then the suspenseful element. With the romantic suspense, it's like, hey, you're kind of cute. We should go on a couple dates. Oh crap, we're on this date and some guy tried to kidnap me. Or, you know, oh, by the way, I'm on the run from the mob. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's the romance and then, oh, there's also this suspenseful element that's taking place within the stories. Um, and not to say that that diminishes the suspenseful aspect in the romantic suspense line, it does not. You know, I find some of the scenes in Romantic Suspense to be very edge of your seat. I remember one I read by, um, I believe it was Jerry Croto, and there was like this whole scene where they're like driving this car and it's like a car chase and they had to like bust through um, one of the, uh, you know, when you're going into an underground parking or something, that bar that comes and it was just like, woo, like, you know what I mean? So they are very suspenseful. So don't think that it's all about the romance and then, oh, there's this you know, this guy or whatever that's stalking them or something like that. The heat level is the other thing that's different between the two of them. And I think it's because intrigue tends to be romance secondary that these are a bit more behind closed doors. Now, I'm not saying that there is no love scenes in these books. If there is, your majority of it is happening behind closed doors. They are lower on the heat scale. And there are some authors that don't write it in there really at all. Others that might push the boundaries just a little bit with one I just read recently as well um, by uh, The Body in the Wall. Was that by Rita Heron? That was good. But I was actually surprised that they had like a slightly open door love scene. And I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting, not that I didn't, I don't care. I'll read them all. You know, like I've read the dare books. Those are, you know, the highest level of spice that Harlequin does. So that part of it doesn't offend me or upset me, but it was just a surprise knowing what this line typically does. Now, in terms of the romantic suspense line, much higher heat level, much, much, much higher heat level. The door is wide open for the love scenes and all that stuff. So I've rambled on enough about that. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of an explanation before I got started. So Let's get into a bit of the history of the intrigue line. 
I own the first book. I got this one off of Thrift Books. So the first book is called The Key and it was by Rebecca Flanders. So there is the cover. This came out in it was the early 80s, I think. I cannot remember right off the top of my head. Bear with me here. August 1984. My brother was two. <laughs> Uh, he celebrates his 40th birthday this year. So that should tell you something. So 38 years this line has been around. Um, so right here in the very front, it gives us like little dear reader. We're so proud to bring you Harlequin Intrigue. These books blend adventure and excitement with the compelling love stories you've come to associate with Harlequin. This series is unique. It combines contemporary themes with the fast-paced action of a good old-fashioned page-turner. You'll identify with these realistic heroines and their daring spirit as they seek the answers, flirting with both danger and passion along the way. We hope you'll enjoy these new books and look forward to comments and suggestions. So that's from the very first book, and I don't think it's changed a whole lot from that original mission statement, if you will. Um... I did start reading this one in February, but then I ended up in hospital, as a lot of you know, and I got left here at the house. I was away for two weeks in hospital, and I just didn't pick it back up, but I really, really want to. So, I mean, we're going right, like, look at this old, that's got to be, what, a Commodore 64? Like, <laughs> what's that computer? And I really like these because even back, back in the original older ones, the heroine did not necessarily play second fiddle. Like, it wasn't the, um, the female kick butt heroine that we see now in a lot of the intrigue books but she definitely wasn't a meek little kitten like you know looking up to the alpha hero going oh please save me sir she was a you know badass pardon my my french in her own way and i really like that so that is the first one came out in 1984 so like i said 38 years the line's been around 38 years as of august the newest book just in reference um i have a book coming here that I got from the lovely Katie Richards. I will be showing it to you guys in a minute. It comes out in August. Um, it's number 2089 in the line. So we went from one to 2089 books. So almost 2100 books so far. So another one, again, I'm just kind of showing you guys as well the, the way the covers changed as they went through. This is one that I hauled recently on the channel. It's called Nightwind by Amy Thurlow, um, number 175. And this one came out in December of 91. So not quite a decade later. So yeah, um, you know, you get like the couple here and then there's usually like a secondary little picture. So yeah, but they kind of stuck with this white cover and this went for quite a while with the line. And then they changed to like, this is the part, th these are the books that I didn't care for design wise because they kept changing the colors of the covers and I just didn't feel like it fit. So this one here I have is The Charmer by Lenora Carr. This is part of the Avenging Angel series. So they did get a little paranormal with these occasionally as well. So this one I think is, um, the woman went blind in a car accident and I guess there's a guardian angel looking after her, but there is a romance in here somehow. Um, he put, so it says, the doctor pulled her from the wreck. His sensuous voice and tender touch ignited her desires. But could Shauna put her trust in a man she couldn't see? And could the littlest angel save the family she'd taken under her wing? The family she would have wanted for her own if only she were human. So again, a very suspenseful, not suspenseful, um paranormal aspect to this there was also a long-running series that they did called the fear familiar series I'm trying to remember who the author of that was carolyn burns i believe and it was all about a black cat who was a familiar and the different like kind of adventures that the cat went at it sounds cheesy as all get out but guys it was kind of spectacularly cheesy <laughs> And I loved it. And as I was, and I saw, I, I own a couple of them. And I was hunting through my shelves the other day, getting ready for the retro romance readathon that I am co hosting in July. And I had my hands on both of those books at one point. Do you think I can find them now? No, because I wanted to show you guys one of the covers. But yeah, so definitely check out the Fear Familiar books as well. So yeah, like I said, design wise, not my favorite because they kept changing the colors and it just didn't feel very suspenseful. But then they kind of now stuck with this purple theme, which I'm kind of really loving. So this one is by Deborah Webb. It's called Colby Roundup. And this is from July of 2012. Um, so yeah, so there's the design for these ones. Sorry, these stupid stickers that the stores put on. But if you can tell, there's like a fingerprint there in the design. It says Intrigue Harlequin. Um, now the Colby books, uh, Colby Agency 
is a long running series for Deborah Webb. She has written a ton of books for the Intrigue line. Highly recommend her stuff. This is her 50th book that I happen to have. Sorry, the cat's sneezing behind me. It's Bernard. Again, speaking of a black cat right there. Um, yeah, and she does a lot of cowboys. They really moved into a lot of cowboy type stories around this period, which has stayed to this day, which I am very happy about. But yeah, so Deborah Webb, um, that's that one. And then we moved in. No, wait, did I jump ahead? I did. I'm sorry. These are backwards. So this one is how it changed after. So from this, it went to this. And we have, this is As Darkness Fell by Joanna Wayne. This is number 753 and it's from February of 04. So yeah. Uh, Hidden Passions, Full Moon Madness. Deadly danger reveals secret desires in the hours between dusk and dawn. The darkness is safer when you're with a cop, it says. <laughs> so yeah, um, definitely very spicy, it seems. But, you know, I mean, they were, I think they've toned it down as the years have gone on. Maybe I, I'm trying to remember because I've read a bunch of the old ones. This is one of the first series I ever picked up by Harlequin. Um, from Harlequin, I should say, was just the intrigue line in general, and I've always loved them. So then we went into the Deborah Webb ones, as you can see here. And then this one is probably the same year as the Deborah Webb, but I wanted to share this one as well. Yeah, this is from July. This is from November of the same year. But you can kind of see the cover a little bit better with that fingerprint. It doesn't have the sticker on it. So this is The Vanishing. It's part of the Mystery Parish series. It takes place in New Orleans. And this one is really, really good. Like, Jana de Leon does a bunch of books for the Intrigue line, and I highly recommend that you check them out. So this is like an author recommendation too. Um, if you want that more spooky, supernatural-esque, like they're not supernatural, but they definitely have that feel to them. Um, they are really, really good, and I highly recommend them. So let's now get into the oh, huge pile of books that I have here. So essentially, like I said, I am more recommending authors to you guys at this point, and all of these authors will be listed in the description box below. So please go ahead and check them out. But just, I encourage you just to check out the Intrigue line in general. So Amanda Stevens. Amanda Stevens wrote a ton of books for Intrigue way back, like way back in the, um, you know, the early 2000s. And she did write a number of them that were on the more gothic-y, spooky side. Um, and then she took a hiatus. And I know someone told me once the reason why, and I can't remember now, so I apologize if it was one of you, one of my lovely viewers out there, or whether it was in like a chat or something like that. But she's back now, and she's writing more for Intrigue, and it makes me very, very happy. So this one I have here is Criminal Behavior. It is from uh, May of 2019, so a little bit more recent. This one I have read Joanna Wayne. Did I mention a Joanna Wayne already? I might have. I don't remember. I did. Yes. As Darkness Fell was a Joanna Wayne. So this is a more recent one by her. This came out in August of 2019, and it's New Orleans Noir, and this one was really good. I like this one quite a bit. Um, I absolutely recommend her books. She is a definite favorite of mine. This one was very spooky. Um, the French Kiss Killer has returned and he has his next target in sight. So there's like a serial killer in New Orleans and he's talking to this woman and this guy, what is he? He's a detective, is trying to help her. So it was really, really good. Highly recommend. Janice K. Johnson is another absolute favorite of mine. This is a more recent one as well. May of 2021. You can see how the, the cover design has changed again. Harlequin is kind of rebranded. A couple years ago, they did this like, I don't want to say rebranding, but they redid all their cover design to kind of match each other. So all of them are just kind of like this little, it's a diamond. It's a Harlequin diamond, right? Um, you know, if you were to like, you could picture it being like a full on diamond. It's just like the corner of it, right? And then it has like the line and each one is a different color. So the spines are all a different color. Um, but yeah, so like I said, Janice K. Johnson, this is Cold Case Flashback. It's part of the Unsolved Mystery series, um, which is a non, like, they're connected by the fact that all the books are Unsolved Mysteries. That's pretty much the only connection. None of the characters cross over or anything at all like that. I have not read this one yet. I'm hoping to get to it by the end of this year. Um, Dolores Fawson. Dolores Fawson is a name in intrigue. She is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. This is Sheriff in the Saddle. This is a newer one. It comes out next month. Um, this was sent to me by the Harlequin... Um, uh, the influencer team. And, uh, yeah, I am looking forward to getting to it. Um, she does a lot of great, great cowboy romances. Um, to uphold the law, will she take down her ex is what it says on the back. So like I said, this comes out in July of 2022. 
So that is a next month's read. Paula Graves is great as well. I read this book too. This is Deception Lake. Really good. Really, really good. I liked this one a lot. It's part of a series. Um, the Gates is the name of the series. I don't think it was the first in the series, but I was able to read it like as a standalone and be fine with it. Um, and this is a larger print. So there are some of the intrigues you can find that are a larger print, which is great. But again, get, you can get them all on, on ebook generally. Um, and I find that's the best way to read because you can increase the font size to whatever you want. Um, next up we have Juno Rushdan uh, with Tracing a Kidnapper. This is part of the Behavioral Analysis Unit. Now, Intrigue has done a couple of these like three or four book series. You do need to read these in order because they generally follow one case, like one big case. And then each book is kind of a standalone and there's a romance within it. So this is, like I said, Tracing a Kidnapper. Um, rescuing children is her life's mission. Saving this one is paramount. So she's an FBI agent. So there's another one called, um, that I talked about when I did my Julianne Lindsay video last week, uh, with the, um, the Traverse City series, which was another like three or four book series that you should really read in order, uh, to really get the full, you know, but you can pick them up and read them out of order if you so desire. So yeah, so Juno Rushdan, another great author. Julianne Lindsay, I mean, I mentioned her, she had her entire own video, but just another one, Missing in the Mountains. Her books are fantastic. Please check them out. This is a fortress defense book. Love, love, love. I'll leave a link to that Julianne, video, uh, Julianne Lindsay video below in case you guys are curious and you want to go and check it out. Cassie Miles. Cassie Miles does some great intrigue. Like, look at this cover, you guys it's called Snowblind. Like you can clearly feel the cold in this with this handprint. Like, oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. This is from September of 2014. So eight years ago now. Wow. Where does time go? What is time anymore, people? What is time? So yeah, looking forward to, this is one I have not gotten to yet. Tyler Ann Schnell is another author that I absolutely love when it comes to intrigue. We have Full Force Fatherhood here. This is another larger print book. Uh, Orion Security. Yeah, clearly. Fatherhood was never in the cards until an innocent family wrapped themselves around his heart. Oh, I love it. And again, large print. But yeah, I adore her books. Definitely check her out. K.D. Richards. Cannot do one of these videos without mentioning the amazing K.D. Richards. Friend of the pot or friend friend of these videos, friend of mine, um, friend of the podcast, as we, me and Brie used to say about the, or about the categorically romance podcast, Brie is still doing the podcast. I am not anymore, but we started the podcast because of a Katie Richards book. Um, we both loved it, realized it was not getting the love it deserved and kind of the podcast grew from there. Um, but this is her newest release. It does not come out till August. So this is a I got lucky and she sent me a copy of this because, again, she's awesome and she signed it. So this is Shielding Her Son. This is part of the West Investigation series that she's writing and it is fabulous. Highly recommend that you check it out. So yes, read Katie Richards books. They are fantastic. Nicole Helm. Nicole Helm. I cannot do an intrigue video without talking about Nicole Helm. Another one who does fabulous cowboy books. This is Wyoming Cowboy Protection. Um... A woman and her baby are on the run. A woman and baby on the run just upended a cowboy's life. So he's probably just going about his business, doing his cowboy thing. And some woman with her child is like, help me. And that's probably the story. So I have not read it yet. I'm very much looking forward to it. I love Nicole Helm. Heather Graham. Heather Graham got her start writing for romantic suspense for the, well, what used to be known as the Silhouette Intimate Moments line which then became Silhouette Romantic Suspense, which is now Harlequin Romantic Suspense. But she has done a bunch of intrigue novels as well. This is one of them called Tangled Threat. Um, it was really good. I liked it a lot. Some things you can't forget. Um, yeah, she does a lot of history type stuff um, in her books and they're fantastic. So highly recommend, of course, Heather Graham. And last, but most certainly not least, I'm not going to talk too much on this book. Because um, there is a vlog coming next Tuesday where I am going to gush poetically about this book. Denise N. Wheatley. Denise N. Wheatley. Please go and read her books, you guys. Please. 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 Um, 
The Heart Shaped Murders. This is her newest release. It came out this month in June. It's available on your store shelves right now. Go out. I'll wait. You can go. Go pick it up. I'll, I'll, I'll wait. We can, we can all take just a minute. <laughs> go and get it. Go and get it and read it, you guys. It's the first in a series, the West Coast Crime Stories uh, series. I'm not going to tell you guys here what I rated it. I want to save it for the vlog. Um, but it was, I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> I highly recommend that you pick it up because this was so good. So this was the second chance romance that I was talking about. Like she's got a serial killer chasing her and he's at the very beginning. It's not a spoiler. He attacks her. So she goes back home to recuperate. Like she's from Los Angeles. So she goes back to a smaller town further North in California, you know, re-meets her old high school boyfriend killer still after her, you know, this relationship. And, oh, it's, it's. Stay tuned next Tuesday for my full thoughts on this book, but highly, highly recommend. So yeah. So anyway, guys, I have rambled on enough about these books. You guys know how much I love the intrigue line. Please do yourself a favor and go and pick some of these up. Again, all the authors will be listed below. So please go ahead and check them out. And if you have any comments or questions, post those in the comment section below as well. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.